Fournette. Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, everybody? It is Tree from Tree Talks here with another episode of the 2018 Positional Outlook for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, today is the final episode for the offensive groups, and we're ending it with the offensive line. The Jaguars' offensive line last year performed a lot better than what a lot of people had thought heading into the 2017 season. They allowed a franchise low 24 sacks in 2017 and somehow the Jaguars even managed to get better adding all pro offensive guard Andrew Norwell to the mix. So ladies and gentlemen this is the final offensive installment of the Jaguars positional outlook and without further ado I am Tree from BigJReport.com and this is the Jaguars positional outlook for the offensive line. So again, we're going to be doing this kind of like how we did the wide receiver position last week. We're going to be going over each player and going over their strengths and weaknesses as a whole as opposed to just doing strengths, weaknesses, and then addressing all the players at once. We're going to be going player by player this time and going over uh, strengths and weaknesses. And I'm going to be starting off with the edge setters for the Jaguars, starting off with second-year player Cam Robinson. Cam Robinson had a strong year two, only allowing two sacks in the 2017 campaign. However, he did have nine penalties last season, which did lead the Jaguars last year. He had six offsides penalties, so the discipline definitely needs to step up a little bit and having three holding penalties to go along with that. So the discipline and the growth um, is going gonna, is gonna to show in year two. You know, that kind of is a seemingly trend for rookie offensive linemen. You know, they come in, they're a little bit less disciplined because, you know, coming out of college they would dominate kids and now they're going into the NFL facing you know really stellar defensive linemen and I think without a doubt that's just going to improve his game you know going up against guys like J.J. Watt next year and uh, Jarrell Casey uh, as well you know pretty good defensive lines that they have in the AFC South I think that's just going to get better like I said though the discipline needs to step up a little bit no more false starts no more dumb penalties to set us back now he only played in fit. He played in 15 games, so he stayed pretty healthy for the 2017 season. So that is another plus side. He's seemingly, uh, seemingly a reliable, healthy offensive tackle. So that is something that you look for, Hella, when you look for uh, offensive linemen for the future. So he seems to stay healthy, and you know he's very nasty in the trenches too. A physical guy can drive defensive linemen five, six yards off the ball during run plays, and can protect Blake Morrell's blind side. Like I said, only allowing two sacks last year and he also did not allow a single sack in the postseason so look for cam robinson to make the next jump to be a even better offensive lineman heading into the 2018 season next up we're going to be talking about the jaguars right tackle jeremy parnell jeremy parnell is entering the eighth year in the league in his fourth season with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Last year, he only played in 13 games, the first year missing more than one game since he's been in the league, so that's a little worrisome, but 13 games is still quite a bit for an offensive lineman. You know, you see those injuries all the time, offensive linemen get hurt. It's hard for, you know, a lineman really to play in uh, 16 consecutive games due to, you know, you're getting hit every play, you're hitting somebody every play. So 13 games, though that is uh, still three games missed, that is still not too bad. But like I said, that was the first time uh, since he's been in the league that he has missed more than one game in a season. So not really worrisome to me, but, you know, a guy that really needs to stay healthy. Um, And also, he really chopped down his penalties in 2017, going from 10 the year before in 2016 to 3. And he went from 6 holding calls to 2 and only had one false start penalty last year. This is a lot of uh, how I'm going to be grading these offensive linemen is sacks allowed and penalties so you know chopping down that really getting that discipline and like I said you know he's been the league a long time you know there's really no excuse to be having 10 penalties in a season so chopping those down in 2017 was a big deal for uh, Jeremy Parnell and he only allowed one sack in his 13 starts for the Jaguars which is his lowest since he came into the league as well so though he missed more games than he has uh, ever missed in his whole career he also allowed the least amount of sacks that he has 
uh, since he's came into the league, and now he's entering year eight. So what he needs to do is he needs to be a leader in that locker room, be the veteran presence that you know everybody wants to have. Because this is a young group. You got guys like AJ Can who's entering year four. You got Cam Robinson entering year two, uh, and then Andrew Norwell. I believe Norwell is entering year four too, if I do believe so. And you know, being the most experienced guy there, you know, you need to be a role model in that locker room, really set the example, and you know, continue to improve and continue to. Uh, Build off a of last season, which seems like to be his best season, cutting down the penalties and uh, allowing only one sack, which is a career low. So to continue on last year's success is what I really need, and I really think uh, Jeremy Parnell needs to do. I do think he's a good offensive lineman. I think he's a very good pick to have at the wide tackle. Kind of underrated, in my opinion. He does not allow a lot of sacks. Like I said, he opens up running lanes. He's definitely a good right tackle for the Jaguars and expect him to improve next year. Now we are going to be talking about the Jaguars offensive guard and the guy that everybody seems to be talking about this season, and that is A.J. Can. A.J. Can played in 15 games last season. He led the team in holding penalties with three. He only allowed two sacks last season, and this is the last year of his rookie deal. And he is walking on very, very thin ice because he seemed to be the liability in the Jaguars offensive line last year. Um, and then they brought in rookie Will Richardson, who I think was kind of a steal in the fourth round. So, you know, having a young rookie breathing down your neck, you know, ready to take your spot after, you know, probably one of your worst seasons, allowing two sacks, which, you know, doesn't seem like a whole lot, but that's one of the most uh, allowed all season last year. In fact, I think it is the most. I think Cam Robinson also did allow two. I think I said that. So I think him and Cam Robinson are tied. But, you know, Cam Robinson was a rookie last year, bro. You need to really step up your game. This is your fourth year, and this is the last year on your rookie deal. You really need to make a name for yourself, and you really need to prove why you need to be here. I have a lot of faith in AJ Can. I think he's a good player. I think in year two, in your uh, year two and year one, I think he was a solid offensive guard. I think he definitely... Last year did not play to his full potential. Uh, why that is, I'm not too sure. But I do think once AJ Can does reach his full potential and when he is playing uh, pissed off and when he's playing you know, dirty in the trenches, I think he's one of the best offensive linemen on, that the Jags have. And I may get a lot of hate for that. But I do think that he does have a lot of potential. And I think that he is going to be able to get this starting right guard job um, over Will Richardson. However, this is going to be a battle to watch in the preseason because, you know, I think if AJ Can does fuck up, you know, at least once, I think Will Richardson's going to go in. That's how, like, thin of the ice he's walking on um, for that. And it actually reminds me of high school. That's, that's literally how it was for me in high school. I played guard in high school, and uh, I was really walking on thin ice to be the starter uh, week one. We were actually facing, like, the second or third best defensive tackle in, like, the nation when uh, in the first week of the season. And, you know, it was against me and this other guy. And, you know... Uh, I was the starter. I was actually named the starter and everything. Like, I was read off in introductions. But then, literally, the day of the game, I ended up not starting. But it was okay. I was a rotational defensive end. So, I still ended up getting my playing time. So, enough of that. I think maybe that's why I like AJ Can so much. I see a lot of myself in him. And I really hope that he uh, succeeds. But, no, I do think AJ Can is a guy that, if reach if he reaches his full potential, does have a high ceiling. And I think that he could prove himself this year. But, again, he's walking on very thin ice and has a rookie knocking on his door so don't be surprised if you see AJ can get benched this year in favor of Will Richardson and also don't be surprised if AJ can puts on a clinic this year and improves and now we're going to be breaking down the other Jaguars guard all pro guard Andrew Norwell the Jaguars picked him up this year in free agencies the newest acquisition he had no penalties all season the first time he's ever done that as a starter and he only allowed one sack this was one of the best free agents available in fact was one of my most uh pressing guys that i really really wanted the jaguars to get i like literally my two guys that i really wanted the jaguars to get were austin safarian jenkins and andrew norwell and i was happy enough that we got both of them i think they both have tremendous upside i think andrew norwell is a top five guard in the league i still can't believe he's never made a pro bowl you know being a first team all pro he can do it all he can run block he can pass block and i think this is just going to be a tremendous pickup for the jaguars adding to an already pretty decent pretty solid group last year and adding an all-pro guard to the number one uh, rushing offense in the league. And the I believe we were the 11th, 9th or 11th passing offense. That's only going to get better. Protecting Bortles, giving him more time to throw. When Bortles has time to throw, and he can really survey the pocket. You know, he could either uh, run, you know, because he's mobile. And he could also make good throws down the field, finding the opening guy. So I think Andrew Norwell is going to end up being one of the best, one of the better free agent pickups the Jaguars have this season. Maybe even... Uh, 
ranking on an all-time list. I don't want to get too confident, but I do think that this pickup is going to help the Jaguars in a lot of ways. I think it's going to be a lot like the Calais Campbell pickup last year where he made such an instant impact. I think, you know, it's not going to be going, it's not going to go as noticed due to him being an offensive lineman straight up, but, you know, I think that's going to improve our rushing attack even more than it was last year. And, then, you know, you got guys like Corey Grant who's on the come up and TJ Yeldon who, you know, has to be, you know, fighting for a spot and really trying to improve his game so, you know, Corey Grant doesn't take over his reps. So, you know, you got hungry running backs in the backfield and you got a solid offensive line with an all pro guard that you came, that uh, you brought in when a group last year <laughs> allowed a league low 24 sacks. Imagine, I think we could break that this year. Uh, it's nutty to me that was only 24. I did look that up. I actually uh, found that stat watching the uh, Jaguars yearbook thing on the NFL Network last yesterday. On Was it yesterday? No, it was on Sunday. Um, when the uh, they, they talked about the Jaguars' offensive line and allowing a uh, franchise low 24 sacks. So this year, let's try to hit 20 or something, you know, because Andrew Norwell, I think, does add even more intensity and even a more incredible play at the offensive guard position. I cannot underplay how excited I am to add Andrew Norwell to this great group of guys, and I think it's going to help out the team tremendously next season. And finally, we are going to be talking about the Jaguars' center Brandon Linder. Brandon Linder, ever since he came into Jacksonville, has been the rock of our offense. He might be one of the most underrated offensive linemen in the league. He doesn't really have too much of a flaw to him. He plays very good football. He's intense. He's good at the run blocking. He's a leader. You know, has the great work ethic. He's really what a great offensive lineman should be. And you add Andrew Norwell there. Well, he'll be on this side. And you got you can't over here. We're like, come on, bro, let's do something. But you know, he has he has uh, Andrew Norwell on the left side. So you know, he knows that he's going to be a uh, putting in work. I would not want to be a defensive tackle or a or a linebacker coming off of a double team uh, with Brandon Linder and Andrew Norwell. I think that's going to get nasty. That's what I'm saying though. These holes are going to be so big because you know you got Andrew Norwell and then Brandon Linder is slept on center who I think should even maybe even be considered like an all pro type of talent. You know, he's a solid solid center. And, you know, it's crazy to me, too, that he's never been to a Pro Bowl. He's definitely more than deserving of it. Another guy just like uh, Andrew Norwell, I cannot say enough good things about, and I cannot say uh, less bad things about. You know, and this was the first year as a full-time starter. He allowed no sacks. So that is also an intense, crazy thing to me. And I think that's just going to improve more and more in his game. Why would he allow another sack? You know, he's developing. He's playing well. He earned a new contract, I believe, last year or two years ago because, you know, the Jaguars did see what this guy does have to offer. He's an excellent, excellent center, an excellent offensive lineman. And like I said, one of the most underrated players in the NFL at his position. And that was my 2018 positional outlook for the Jaguars offensive line position. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Trevon Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Trevon Pixley. And follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. And next week we start the defensive positional outlook. And we're going to be starting with the, de the defensive back position group. And ladies and gentlemen, if you heard that Infinity War was the best crossover event to ever happen ever, wait till, what, wait till you see what I got planned up for next week's for the defensive back position. I got a guy featuring with me as well respected in the Jaguars community, the Jaguars YouTube community, and I think you guys are going to be very excited. I think it's going to be very good content. I think it's going to be a very good video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a terrific day.